Welcome to the Philanthropeneur Show, hosted by Dr. Victoria Boyd, designed to offer tips, strategies, and insights to empower nonprofits and entrepreneurs with sustainable win-win solutions. The Philanthropeneur Show is sponsored by the Philanthropeneur Foundation, building capacity through education and professional services. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Philanthropeneur Show. This is Dr. Victoria Boy, president of the Galaxy Group, and I am so excited to welcome our guest co-host today, Susan Dane C. We had her on the show a couple weeks ago, and since then we have been talking nonstop. It's, it's unbelievable things we've been talking about. Um, and when Heidi had some problems or just some conflicts, why not bring Susan back? And she jumped at the opportunity to come back as my co-host, and I'm so excited to have her here. Susan, say hi to our listeners. Oh, thank you, Victoria. You know how happy I am to be sharing this special half hour with you. And um, we've got such a dynamic and growing audience. It's quite exciting. Um, yes. I'm, you know, um, you asked me to say a couple of words. So my company is two things. Smart Women International, and our branding division is Smart Vision Branding, and we'll have a chance to mention a little bit more about it, but the reason I'm so excited to be on the show is you and I are so aligned. Smart Vision Branding is about branding visionaries and leaders for their contribution to society, and um, specifically as entrepreneurs or philanthropeneurs and nonprofits, and what we've been talking about is all the different ways we connect and how we're going to build together, so it's very exciting to be here today, and most of all, to welcome Dr. Craig Brown, who's senior partner and CEO of STEM Resource Partners, and he's also the incoming national president for the nonprofit BDPA. Um, you've been getting so many dynamic guests, Victoria, and I, I want to know the story about how you and Dr. Brown met. You know, Susan, I, social media is a fabulous thing. <laughs> I, I've been using it, and I have been had great success just finding opportunities, and I actually met uh, Dr. Brown uh, as a connection. Uh, I saw that he had some great things going on, and I just reached out and asked if we could talk, and we connected on the phone. Um, I posted things about philanthropeneurs, and, and his name kept popping up, and so uh, I just looked at his profile, and we ended up talking and having a great conversation. Um Heidi mentioned on uh, the first broadcast that I had my to-do list, and so when I was going to do a radio show back in the spring, the first person I thought about was Dr. Uh, Craig Brown to be one of my guests, and he agreed back then, and so naturally when this show really evolved and came about, I was able to catch him, and he willingly agreed to come on. So let me tell you And he's got the most amazing resume. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's exciting. I'm I'm really uh, honored that he decided to come on. But let me give you a little bit of his background. He has served as a business owner, entrepreneur, educator, philanthropist, and mentor for more than two decades. A dynamo. He has more than 25 certifications, a dual bachelor's degree in computer science and mechanical engineering, an MBA, and a doctorate in management information systems, systems and computer information systems. Gee, I'm tired already just reading all this. I know. <laughs> He's been a front runner in the technology industry much of that time and has received multiple technology and community service awards, including recognition from Microsoft, IBM, Oracle, and BDPA. I'll let you uh, him tell you what BDPA is. And yeah, I, just I want to know. know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. In 2013 has been stellar year for Dr. Brown. He received the 2013 American Business Award, the Stevie Award for Information Technology, the 2013 BDPA Community Service, Service Epsilon Award, and named in Houston's Business Journal not once, but twice this year as People on the Move. He also had his own personal journey that instilled with him a, him a drive and passion to live life to the fullest. Even when he takes a little time away from business, Dr. Brown is just as dedicated to philanthropic efforts and awareness. It's critical to Dr. Brown to give back through community service, and he serves through several organizations. A leader with a clear 
daily goal in mind, Brown seeks to offer advice to help ease challenges that most companies and professionals face daily. His credentials and experience have propelled his career as a leading expert in the IT arena and as a trusted leader of a national network of technology industry professionals. At present, Dr. Brown serves as the senior partner and CEO of STEM Resource Partners. He also serves as the incoming national president for the nonprofit organization, BDPA. Oh, here it is, Black Data Processing Associate, as well as serving on boards of other nonprofits and community-based organizations. Whew, okay, I'm tired. Welcome, Dr. Craig Brown. Maybe maybe we call you Craig? You can. Call me Craig. That's quite all right. Great, great. I mean, wow, that that was something else. <laughs> well, these so, co- connections are so inspiring, and um, I've got a ton of questions. You know, Victoria, you mentioned that Dr. Brown, first of all, welcome, uh, Craig. Yeah. We're really happy to have you here, and I'm happy to be here. Um, but, you know, in that uh, really illustrious bio, um, you, what you mentioned and, and Victoria mentioned that you had your own personal journey that gave you this drive and passion to live life to the fullest. And I'm wondering, is that part of what fueled your desire to become a philanthropist? And how did that happen? And when did you realize you really were a philanthropist? That's actually a good question. I'll start with the latter of your question and work my way back. How did I know I was? I was a philanthropist because actually someone told me. I didn't know what the word philanthropist meant. I had to look it up. And this was probably about, this was probably about eight years ago. And because um, I always associated philanthropy with, with churches and, and religious endeavors, and I didn't realize that philanthropy was a lot longer, you know, a lot larger uh, picture than, than, than the picture I had of it. But I've always been a part of my community, um, I've always been a part of the technology com- com- the community, and I felt it was my obligation um, as a Christian, as a as a human being, as a as an African American man with an education to to deliver whatever I could to those that needed it, could use it, and it initially was just in the form of donations, a little bit of time, a little bit of money. Um, then it turned into mentoring. Um, and then it turned into becoming a part of organizations and making a thrust for, for affecting people's lives. And then my personal journey started in, in, in different aspects of my life, but the biggest one that impacted me was was my pancreatic cancer journey. And, oh my goodness! And, and you hear the, and you hear this a lot. It's not uncommon for people to be changed after undergoing, you know, a major illness. But what it really does is it allows us time to reflect and and you start thinking about the impact you had because you're thinking this might be the end of the journey. You know, I might not make it through the treatments. And, and, and I had the worst, what I would consider one of the worst cancers um, that you could have in terms of the survival rate. And so, you know, you get your affairs in order, and, it, and it's a sad and troubling thing for, to go through with your family and your loved ones and, and your dear friends, but... But you do reflect, um, and, and in reflection, I did a lot of work with people in terms of their careers and how I could impact their careers and impact their businesses from the standpoint of, you know, one small business owner helping another. But after I survived my treatments and, you know, and was given a chance to, you know, further my, you know, my time here on earth, I decided to be more of a connection to the human being and affect people's lives more intimately than just a career perspective or their or you know career choices or their um, their businesses. So in addition to that, I used the, the organizations like BDPA to actually tap the lives of, of young 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 people, um, and, and it could still be in, a, in in an area that deals with career choices in terms of advice, but it also could be more personal in terms of what to do with your life, and not necessarily from a job perspective, but from a direction perspective. So um, with the help of BDPA and, um, and, and STEM Resource Group, which is, a, which is a nonprofit spin-off of STEM Resource Partners, which is a for-profit business in the staffing, in the staffing and, and technology realm, I offer training for free to, for those that want it. 
Um, we offer um, serve a number of services to small businesses. They want an idea as to how technology can impact their bottom lines and the right technologies for their businesses and so, so forth and so on. And then I do a number of um, cancer walks and, and awareness campaigns to make people aware of the healthy living side because they all kind of go hand in hand. You know, as, as, as entrepreneurs, you know, we, we have our business and we have our business goals in mind, but we often lose sight of the number one resource in our own in our business, and that's us. As yes, people. yes. And 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 doing what needs doing what we need to do to stay fit in order to achieve the professional goals that we have set. So um, so so that's why when you read the the the, the bio, it seems like it's a whole lot. But that's a 25 year span of information that you ran through, which is really, yeah. it, it seems like you know uh, overwhelming um, uh, introduction. But but you know each one of those um, achievements that I've, I've 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 earned came with the benefit of um, of bringing along bringing people along with me to to also get in line to be the next to receive those types of achievements. Absolutely. Well, that's yeah, tremendous. Well, that's- yeah, that's like a, a that legacy leadership model that I often speak about, where you're sharing and, and bringing others along to do what you do. And, and it really ties into my question. Um, you described a little bit how you give, but how is your giving received by others? Um, what's your been What's been your uh, response to how you're giving? It's overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> giving is not hard. When you when you find the people who need what you what you have to offer, and and and, and fortunately for me, the community that I'm from, um, the communities that I travel within, um, uh, and, and they're all people of all walks of life, all shades of color. They they need um, the 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 health and wellness um, advice that I provide. They need the um, professional advice that I provide, and then for those entrepreneurs that you know, are willing to take that chance and, and you know, get out there and make some of, of the businesses that they want to start. Um, I do a number of, of sessions and conversations and speaking engagements that speak specifically to them, and they need it as well. So I haven't found any shortage of, of, of people who want the information that I have to provide. My only shortage is the venue uh, and, the, and the method in which I deliver the information. That's really where I fall short. Yeah, it's always a challenge. But I think what you're talking about with the response being overwhelming, this is this is the case. There's the world I always say to get ready for the world that's waiting for us. We always think that we're gonna be, you know, carving some new channel like the like the Grand Canyon had to do, but you know, it's really the world is so hungry and so waiting. And um I have two questions actually. I want to ask as an entrepreneur has being philanthropic philanthropic helped your business? I'm sure it has, but I'd like to hear how. But I also, before we go any farther, I want you to explain what STEM stands for because it's S T E M, sure. right? So we know exactly sure. what you're up to. <laughs> the, the philanthropic component does indeed help. Um, I didn't quite, again, as I mentioned earlier, make the connection because. Initially, when I started out on my entrepreneur endeavors, because you know my focus was primarily on services, products, you know, uh, customer, customer care, things like that. But then, when you make time to participate in in community events, you actually bring your business with you. And even if the end result isn't to find new customers, oftentimes being seen at a marathon or being seen at a, you know, a cancer awareness campaign, and, and folks, people want to know, you know, what you do for a living and where you work, and you mention your business, and you may not even be selling anything to those people, but they spread the word about you and your company to others, and you get phone calls out of nowhere sometimes, and you don't, you know, well, how did you find me? And you go, oh, you know, Mrs. Madison from. Uh, and you stand at the, you know, from the, the, the cancer awareness campaign mentioned, you know, you were a technology company and we can use that. So it, it, philanthropic and, and entrepreneur endeavors can be combined um, even if you don't intend to, to use your philanthropic endeavors to, to grow your business. I think it just often happens naturally. I think and, so, and I think in this age when leadership, and as you were talking about, Victoria, legacy, you know, mm-hmm. is so people are so hungry for this. 
you know, in, of course, in my company, what we do is we, we put that leadership and legacy and the philanthropy out in front because, you know, we have a very informed consumer base these days, and it's a saturated market. So if people have a choice, they are going to obviously buy from services or products from whomever is the most uh, socially responsible company <clears throat> and um, most impactful. So what you're doing is vital and exciting as a new model. Right, yeah. yeah. And uh, please, so us, give us the acronym for STEM. Uh, I think I know. Uh, so, so STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And right. it, yes. it's used, in a, it's used in, a, in, a, in a few areas. One, in the academic world, um, we're talking about the, um, the, the curriculum that fall into those particular categories. Um, in a professional world, we're talking about the career um, career options that fall into those departments or those companies that need um, science, technology, engineering, and math. And, and believe it or not, science, engineering, technology, and, and, and math, they're intertwined in almost every aspect of, of, of corporation, of, of corporate America today. Um, we don't realize it or not. I know you can see technology most often, but we don't realize, but there's scientists that actually um, are hired by companies to help them, you know, build data models in order to build mm -hmm. information flow in order to make decisions on where markets are going and make predictions and projections. So corporations are using scientific, you know, equation to determine where to take their business to the next level. Same thing with math and engineering. So the, 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 the acronym for STEM is, is almost in, entangled into the entire aspect of business. And even if you're not a scientist or, or an engineer or a mathematician, or work within a technology arena, you're impacted by these by these different um, um, acronyms. Yeah, and you're nationwide, aren't you? Worldwide. This is a global uh, uh, community now, not no longer just just America. Yeah, because you're in Houston, but I know that um, out in LA, I, I attend a networking lunch for uh, for um, philanthropists and also for nonprofits, and there's always a STEM rep there, so I've gotten yeah. to know the, the, the organization well. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm familiar with it through the, the education system, uh, programs for high school students uh, really interested in technology and things. So, yes, it, it's really all tied together. Um, so you are an entrepreneur. We're entrepreneurs. But I think the message that we have sort of embraced needs to be told to other entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. So what would you tell other entrepreneurs based on your background and how you are approaching living your life? I think that the number one message that entrepreneur, that I can give other entrepreneurs, which is a message that I've often given up to date, is to recognize your limitations and acquire the resources necessary to achieve your goals. I think that sometimes we get so caught up in owning the business or the idea, because sometimes it's not a business, but it's an idea that that entrepreneur may take to to reach their financial goals. That we don't realize that we can only carry the torch so so far without assistance. But that it's very very difficult to be alone uh, and to walk the world by uh, you know by your lonesome. So mm -hmm. so recognize where you where you need help, seek out that help. Um, and then, you know, move towards your goals um, um, as, as safely and as, as successfully as possible. And can you say a word or two about the role of entrepreneurs in terms of community, in terms of giving back and supporting others? Yes. You, you have to recognize in, in today's society that um, the world is full of, of needs. Um, we, of, of course, there's, there's tons of wants, but the world is full of needs, and, and, and stepping aside from our own needs and, and assisting those that are less fortunate than us, um, I believe, is an obligation. I believe that, you know, uh, I'm sure it's in the Bible somewhere, and I'm sure it's in, you know, in, in, in documentation that somewhat govern, you know, how we should behave, but we should live up to these, to these obligations because there's plenty of people in the world, and even if you just touch one person, that, that, that one person from, from your help, from receiving your help, may be able to touch someone and it becomes infectious. So yes. they, they, in my opinion, they go hand in hand. It, they, you can't do one without the other, you know, and I believe that your, your blessings and your successes 
will come naturally from from having that mindset because I think it's a mindset, and I think that if you have that mindset, then doing it, it doesn't seem like hard work. It seems like, and yes, actually, it, from it, my perspective, it's fun. True. Yes. I mean, it's, there's certain character or personalities that naturally gravitate to it, um, but I want to help everyone really create that not mindset or, or develop that mindset. There is some economic development being tied to nonprofits. So how would you describe uh, the economic development as it's tied into the question. nonprofit? That is a great question. Economic development is, is, is achieved by recognizing where, where in the community you know, economics, where, where you're underdeveloped where development can be, can be um, maintained or, or, or even created um, because there's something missing or something short, some kind of shortfall. And then once you recognize that shortfall or that missing element, raising money or capital to, it, to, to, to build that component um, is not hard. It could be as simple as a playground in the middle of an ur- urban area in a city to, to make a safe place for kids to, to play. Now, that might not sound like a, a, a huge deal, but it is. And raising money for things like that is not difficult because people typically want to chip in because the people will see the benefit in having that, that new playground. Um, same thing with technology in schools, same thing with, you know, various aspects of developing our children, you know, at, at, at an education or curriculum level. You know, these are just examples of the kinds of things that, you know, you can bring to a community that may not have very much of it. Um, you find the people that, 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 you know, want to drive the idea, and then you put up signs, you send out, you know, social media messaging and let folks know that you're trying to raise and set a goal, $100,000, you know, a $1 million. And you, and, 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 you, and you take those concepts and you let folks know what the money's for, and I bet you, with a little bit of you know uh, monkey grease and a little bit of elbow work, um, the the money's the, the money's just come. And for the development that you need, that's a little bit more, you know, political in nature that that, that connects with your local government. Um, there's probably foundations or other organizations that are set up to provide that type of support from an economic development standpoint and, and impact your community. Absolutely right. We're I think. We're all on the same page in terms of that the entrepreneurial sector can be a great support system and should constantly work uh, in alignment and partnership with the nonprofit and community uh, efforts building and and making sure that the community is growing strong. These have been great uh, conversations. We're not finished yet, but right now, yep, this is the uh, Philanthropreneur Show, and we're going to take a real brief uh, commercial break, and we will be right back with Dr. Craig Brown. Hey, are you a small business owner like me who wants to make a charitable contribution and needs easy access to charitable giving sources? that you can automate for your business for free. Then I invite you to visit www.credit-cares.com. They have charitable giving options using their innovative merchant platform that helps nonprofits raise money and helps merchants make contributions at no additional cost to them using the products and services of Electronic Commerce International. Our giving options are easy to set up for small business. So if you have a business entity, we can donate in your business name. Go to www.credit-cares.com and see how you can make a difference every day by doing what you already do. Go to www.credit-cares.com and fill out the form or call 855-782-2737. For more information on how your business can be a difference maker in your community. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Susan Dane Satine, and I'm thrilled to be co hosting, guest hosting, really, the Philanthropreneur Show with Dr. Victoria Boyd and our inspiring guest, Dr. Craig Brown, who's senior partner, CEO, and of, and, I'm sorry, senior partner and CEO of STEM Resource Partners, a cancer survivor, an active philanthropist 
and um, vital on every platform of both giving and business today. So, Craig, you've really been inspiring me personally. And um, one of the things we've been talking about is the need for entrepreneurs to really have a passion for giving um, and using those entrepreneurial skills in the nonprofit space. Um, That's the way to really make a huge difference. And I'd just like to hear more about this because I do think it's so powerful. Okay. The, you know, the entrepreneurial, you know, as, as it's referred to sometimes, is really, you know, the, the, a, a person stepping outside of the, the standard, um, you know, method for, you know, building, building a career, building a life for themselves, and taking a concept, an idea, a, a, a service, or whatever it may be, to the next level. And giving is, is is almost identical in terms of the way one should should um, provide. You you you, you pick a need. Um, it it's, it can be a very small need. It can be something huge or passionate to dear to your heart. And you you build a path for um, for, for successfully achieving um, whatever whatever it takes to to turn that need into uh, into a benefit. And the skills it takes to do that are identical to the skills it takes to to take an idea or a concept to um, to a business plan and ultimately to you know to an offering to a company or, or an individual for profit. So I, I don't think it. I think that for an entrepreneur, giving is actually an easy thing to do, or at least a lot easier than it may be for someone who who doesn't have the the capacity to to come up with ways to to help others outside of just volunteering their time, which is why you have a lot of people that volunteer, and then you have uh, a smaller group of people that lead the efforts that need the volunteers. But but in that whole pool of giving, it doesn't really matter what capacity you serve as long as you're a part of that, you know, uh, that component in life. And I think it's a life, yeah. again, I, yeah, I And I really love the fact that you obligation. say it's easy because people get on board. People want a way to give. And when philanthropeners create that avenue or create that project, be it the inner city park or whatever, when they create the, the how-to, everybody's so relieved because they have this passion yes. for giving and they're not necessarily the spearheaders, you know, who can create it the way an entrepreneur can, like what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and I love the fact that you said that it, it takes the exact same skills for you know, entrepreneurs and uh, the nonprofit because that's a, a platform I've been talking and talking about that you really need entrepreneurial skills to run a nonprofit. And I I see a a trend and movement towards that, but that's definitely uh, a skill set that would intertwine and really help build a strong foundation for nonprofits, which are going through somewhat of a transition because of the economic and social times that are happening right now. So they, they really need to have those entrepreneurial mindsets that we you know talked about to move forward. I'm so excited because I see you're moving into the new role of national president of BDPA. Tell us more about that organi- uh, organization and what some of your visions are. Sure. The BDPA um, was founded in 1975. Its primary mission um, was to impact the advancement of careers for advanced for African Americans and you know in IT information technology space, it's it's evolved um, quite a bit over the years. Um, it, the organization will be 40 years old um, um, to, in 2015, and as the incoming national president, um, what I really envision the organization going as far as direction um, is incorporation of you know technology trends into our curriculum so that, you know, our high school students, our college students, and our, and our IT professionals that want development from the organization will be touching the actual technologies that the major corporations or, or even uh, small businesses are leveraging today with a global intent. The, the intent from the global perspective is to let all of these people know, the students and the professionals, that in addition to the career advancement that can occur, there's also a personal impact, a, a personal development that you want to walk away with, and you want to be able to take these skills, and you can actually be working for a company in China or Japan or, or in the Southeast Asia from the States with, um, you know, with a remote connection and impact communities outside of the one you live in 
um, because of the Internet, because of social media, because of the technology as easy as it is for everybody to, to obtain because now you can get the technology literally for free in most cases online. So Absolutely. the organization the organization is set up to bring those resources to those that want it, those that need it, um, and, and, and ultimately help impact, um, you know, direction that you can take either leveraging technology as a tool or using technology as a way to get in the door um, for some big opportunities. Okay. You know, we're sort of winding down here, but before we wrap this up, I want you to give your website so people can uh, get in touch with you or at least find out more about what you're doing. So you talked about the Internet. Give us your websites and how they can find you. Sure. Um, the, my company's website is stemresourcepartners.com, um, and my personal website is craigbrownphd.com. You can reach me through either of those either of those websites. My contact information is available. Um, if you have any questions or you want any you know advice on any of the things that I've mentioned, um, I either can provide you with documentation that I may already have, or I can set up a call with you and walk you through you know whatever problem or whatever issue you would like to discuss. Um, I do make myself available to perfect strangers for absolutely no charge. I don't actually make I make very little money in the philanthropy world. Um, but I think that's what it's designed for. It's designed to to be the uh, uh, a sounding board for those that need it when you have the right message to send. So absolutely, communicate, communicate with me. I'm wide open to anybody who wants it. Yeah, I have loved getting to know you, and we are going to close in just a minute. But I have to make sure you give a shout out to everybody who's struggling um, with with the cancer fear, because just to look at what that fight, you know, can how you can triumph and what you your life has expanded exponentially, and is affecting and blessing, enlarging the lives of so many other people. So you just got to give really just say what something to just tell everybody who might be listening, has a family member or whatever, that no matter what they're undergoing now, look what comes from it. Would you just make one statement for yeah, that? we got to hear yeah, it. Do it in about 10 seconds because we're down to under 60 seconds. Go ahead. <laughs> no problem. For all those in a fight to, for survival, um, you will win. Per- perseverance and commitment to the cause, and the cause is your life. So Absolutely. know that your life is worth everything the doctors and, and, your, and the health healthcare industry is telling you to do and achieve. Ask, thank you so much for being on our show. Just to let our listeners know, our next guest will be Dina Trakes Patton. She's a life coach, motivational speaker for business success, and founder of Girls Rule Foundation. We are going to get ready to wrap this up. I want to thank so much my co-host and our guest speaker, Dr. Craig Brown. Thank you so much. Enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in to the Philanthropreneur Radio Show, hosted by Dr. Victoria Boyd. Get involved. Follow us on Facebook and other social media outlets. If you wish to share comments or suggestions or appear as a guest on our show, visit www.thephilanthropreneur.com. Contact Victoria Boyd, email her at thboyd at thephilanthropreneur.com. The Philanthropreneur Radio Show is a production of and sponsored by the Philanthropreneur Foundation, a 501c3 tax-deductible organization.